Hello guys and welcome in this first video in the OpenGL series. Hope you guys are doing good. Now this video is the first one in our series that we're starting. We're going to be talking about OpenGL. We're going to be learning how to use OpenGL to create three-dimensional games or even two-dimensional games. Now this is going to be a long series and I'm planning to upload a video each week. So if you guys don't want to miss, um, click that subscribe button in the description below. You'll hit the like button and also share if you have to now in this video we're gonna be talking about some important concept of OpenGL what is OpenGL uh, what does core profile mean and, and things like that the fact that OpenGL is a state machine how we create object in OpenGL so we're gonna be talking about those basic things because I think it is really crucial for us to talk about that before we start writing any line of code now it's a little bit hard in the first video to start talking about those kind of concepts but don't worry we're gonna be getting into that but before we get started I also want to mention that there are some requirements for you to follow this course because I don't want you guys to be frustrated along this this series because you didn't understand something now it is important for you to have a decent knowledge of C++ language so that's really important even modern C++ because we're going to be using things like templates, generic types and lambda functions. So I want you guys to have an idea about what that is. So if you're not familiar with those terms I just spoke a couple of seconds ago, I will recommend you to go on the link in the description below. There you'll be able to learn about C++. The second thing I need from you is like a basic understanding of linear algebra you know geometry vector analysis because you know OpenGL is a huge library where you simply do mathematics stuff like transformation scales rotations these are basically what you need to have to actually follow this course now let's start talking about OpenGL what is OpenGL now OpenGL can be considered as an API that provides a lot of functions to play around with graphic stuff. So if you if you see that 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 phrase I said can be considered, that means it is not an API. I just use the API keyword because I I think it will be more easy for me to explain based on that word what OpenGL can be. Now what is an API? It's just uh, application programming interface. You can see this sort graphic right here. We have like our game engine on top and we have the graphic card of our computer. We need like an API which define how the engine will communicate with the graphic card to render things on the screen. This is how an API works and this is basically what OpenGL does. But the thing is OpenGL is not an API but a specification. What do I mean by that? OpenGL basically specifies some functions and each graphic card manufacturer will then define what the function does for its own graphic card that's why i didn't want to say opengl is is an api so specification means we have like side depths functions definitions and each graphic card manufacturer will then define what each function does on its own graphic card so that's basically what opengl is so opengl is developed and maintained by chronos group if you want to learn more about opengl you can go on their website and you know read some things online if you want to but that's not important for me to actually spend my time on now I I think it's also important to talk about profiles of you know the mode of operation of OpenGL right now OpenGL has basically two profile we have the core profile and the immediate mode which is also called the fixed function pipeline now the fixed function pipeline is the old way of OpenGL handling stuff. The problem with that old way was the, the programmer didn't have a lot of access on, on the functionalities of OpenGL. So the result of our rendering was not so good because we didn't have a lot of control over things. So, But the thing is, this was really easy to use. Rendering graphic on the screen was really easy, but you see, Programmer always need more control over what they're doing. So that's why the fixed function pipeline was not so great. The core profile is the new way of OpenGL. I think since OpenGL 3.2 or 3.1, I'm not 
exactly sure about that i'll probably check that and let you know so this one is really nice because it gives the programmer more control on on the stuff behind the scene so you just don't throw things on the screen and then see the result just like that but you can actually go out and manipulate what what is going on behind the scene and get a better result on the screen that's why you can see today we have so nice graphic result on the screen using some game engine like unity or unreal engine so that's because of this core profile and things which gives more control over opengl functionalities but the problem with this core profile is that you need to understand how opengl operates because it takes a lot of effort to actually draw a single triangle so we'll see that later as we draw our first rectangle you see how it takes a lot of effort um also one thing which is important for me to mention is opengl is like a state machine what does that mean that means when you set a state variable in opengl as long as you don't change the value of that state variable it will always keep the value you set it so it's like when you set for example the clear color if you leave it like that it will never change that's what we understand by state machine because basically what opengl is is a set of variable that define how opengl should operate that set of variable is often uh, refers to as context that's why um, you can actually draw anything on the screen if you don't have an opengl context and this opengl context is like all these variables that define how he should draw things on the screen how he will you know set the texture and there is a lot we're gonna be talking more about this as we start writing code and things like that type depths for some standard c types like integer flow chart or whatever unsigned int and they basically start with gl int gl float so just like that you simply put gl up front and you have and you can give the the standard name that you know in c now why am i talking about this it's really important to know this because you can still use this standard c types because it's basically the same thing it's just a type def but one thing i have seen one thing i've learned about this it is recommended to use opengl type devs because they actually handle things like multi-platform differences so if you're using a like a, a, com a computer which has a different representation of integer then opengl will also take that in consideration but i i don't know that much about but i know it is recommended to use this so i would also recommend that since it is recommended to do that that's why i just wanted to speak about this and the last but not the least topic of this video is going to be about how we create object with opengl now i use the word object because i didn't know how to specify this properly so object could be anything but this is basically a pattern if you get this then every time we'll have to create like a texture a vertex buffer or whatever you know an element buffer anything like that you will always follow this pattern that's why i want to kind of show you this up front so that when we write the code you guys have an idea about what is going on and why am i using this and that so the first thing you need to do when you want to create an object in opengl you need to define an id because you know opengl is written in c and yeah you don't have things like classes and inheritance in opengl so you always need to you know do things using the c way you know so we define the id this could be a vertex buffer this could be a texture this would be for example the texture id and uh, you don't have to initialize this as i just did it because you know zero is the default value of of is the i'm going to be talking about binding in a couple of seconds now you usually have a function like this gl generate and you give the type of the object so for in the case of a texture for example we say gl generate textures you give the number of texture you want to generate and you pass an array of unsigned integer in which you're going to be writing for each created texture the id in this case as in this case right here i just pass a simple in because i'm just creating one but if you want to create like 10 textures you will pass 10 here and you also create a table up here 
with a size of 10 which you will pass you know as pointer here the reference to it here that's basically what will happen now in order for you to actually do something on the texture you just created you need to activate it and OpenGL uses the bind function to actually activate anything you want to work on so in our case for a texture we say GL bind texture the first variable will be the target texture it could be a 2d texture it could be a 3d or 1d texture so this first variable will be the target we want to bind so since we just created this texture we can simply pass it here we just created here we can simply pass the value of that object right here the texture id he will activate it and now we can go out and set the properties on that texture now the first variable of this setter will be the target of the, the object target in this case it could be a two-dimensional texture or a three-dimensional texture now you have the option you want to set like the variable you remember i said opengl was a set of variable that specify how opengl will operate so now we have the target and now we have the the variable we want to set and here we have the value and this could be anything this could be uh, the channel of your texture you want to do you want to use the rgb standard or the rgba standard with alpha and things like that this could be anything and you can set as much as you want and you want to go out and unbind the texture to release the memory because it is always recommended to unbind your object when you're not using it anymore because you can somehow somewhere in your code trying to do something on it you know just without knowing that's why when you want to draw anything on the screen or change a setting of that object bind it and then unbind it just after that to make sure you always release the memory but if i bind another texture after this without before unbinding this one then it will automatically unbind the first one you can see right here we we bind we set, we tell the target of the object and we give zero zero is as I, I was trying to talk about this in the beginning of this zero is the the default you know the default um, object ID which is uh, the one you will always point on when you don't have anything basically so that's basically how you unbind object now this is how you create object in OpenGL so I hope this kind of gave you um, an overview about OpenGL, about how OpenGL operate. There is a lot more I could you know, speak about, but you know, I don't want to make the video too long and I also don't want to, you know, fill you guys with a lot of information in the first video like this, but just wanted you guys to have an idea about OpenGL. Now what you should keep from this video is OpenGL is a state machine. Uh, OpenGL has different operation. It has a core profile and uh, you know a fixed function pipeline. You know the core profile is a little bit hard to implement, but give more flexibility. The fixed function pipeline is much easy to use, but does not give a lot of control over the functionalities. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we're gonna be starting with creating windows using glf we're gonna be installing things and things like that so the first video was just like to give you an overview about what opengl is and how it operates and i hope you guys have learned something from this video and i just want to mention this before i leave please guys don't leave without subscribing like this video if you find it interesting or you can unlike it i don't know but just let me know down in the description why you didn't like it and why you like it so see you in the next video. Ciao.